Apex Legends Season 20 has had the largest meta shift we have ever seen, and today we're going to rank where every single weapon's power does lie. At F tier, we are going to have what are not necessarily the terrible weapons, but I do have one that I deem to be the worst in the game. Not every weapon in Apex can be on top, as you need to have a sense of the power climb, and this of course means that P2020 is on the bottom. The best thing that the P20 does have going for it is that it is a transfer weapon. It's a light attachment holder. It does an actual decent damage per mag, but it's time to kill an overall usability is just lacking obviously it's the little pea shooter it's going to be outgunned by basically every weapon in the game at the extreme close ranges and absolutely anything outside of like 25 meters i definitely would swap off of it as soon as possible at e tier we have the weapons with minimal viability in apex's meta but it does have an occasional use case the only gun here for me is the charge rifle the charge is just extremely impractical although it is actually kind of fun at times honestly it's the worst experience that you can have when an enemy is in close range and you only have that charge rifle to use. I kind of wish that I had an alternate fire mode where maybe you could get very minimal damage output, but it was easier to use at close ranges. If playing ranked, farming Evo, it can be good if you are more stationary, but you'll need to drop this weapon before you do get to end game. I don't think the charge is per se bad. There's just way many other weapons that are more reliable. At D tier, we have my weapons that are underwhelming and for the most part, you can forego using. The first is the old troll weapon that is actually not not really a troll anymore. It is going to be the Mozambique. Long gone are the days of the Mozambique being a complete garbage tier weapon. The Mozam does have some use cases, and the big use case is going to be its overall range that it does have. It can do full damage up to 45 meters away, which is pretty decent for a shotgun. The faster fire rate also makes it very flexible and forgiving. There's better secondaries, but if you are in a pinch, the beak can work quite nicely, and the damage per mag that the Mozam has is not too bad either. While while the Mozambique can punch up in power, I think the Devotion severely lacks in overall usability. In my opinion, it is pretty bad, but I am going to put it in the underwhelming tier. Its only viability lies when you do get it fully kitted. It can shred enemies in close ranges, but it takes a ton to get it to this, and you also need a good sized bag to hold all that ammo that you are going to need. If you manage to get all the attachments, a turbo, a purple, or a gold backpack, then yeah, this does have some usability, but even then, it's not going to out class a lot of other SMGs or assault rifles, so I would bypass the Devotion, unless you do just want to switch it up. C tier are the fine, and the weapons that are okay, not bad, but also not great. The RE45 sees a small uptick in viability this season due to the continual nerfs to SMGs, but at the end of it, the RE45 lacks time to kill that the other weapons do have, and this is true to both SMGs and assault rifles. The only reason to use the RE45 is its faster handling in both aiming and reloading speed. If you want a quick swap to and run and gun weapon then this can be pretty fun in pubs when you are running something like a prowler with this as a secondary but otherwise i probably would just stay away from it i find that most do not understand just how deceiving the re45 is when it comes to pure time to kill its fire rate actually is not that fast and because it is a pistol it is a little bit weaker than a lot of the smgs and of course shotguns when you are in a close range one-on-one -on -one. next up is going to be the longbow the longbow is not that bad it used to be my favorite gun in the game but overall it doesn't really do anything that special. There's harder hitting snipers if you want the ability to one tap someone down, or there are better weapons with faster time to kill in close ranges like a marksman. G7, 3030 are going to be better for overall damage farming, leveling shields, and overall providing a reliable damage output. The only other reason to take a longbow is to separate your ammo from your teammates because not many players are going to run snipers. The longbow is also very forgiving, but that of course does come with a lot of other trade offs elsewhere. B tier is going to be where we start to get weapons that have a lot of viability in Apex's meta, but they are not still going to be that remarkable in terms of top tier performance. One of Apex Legends' most fun and entertaining weapons is going to be the Sentinel starting off the B tier, and it's not just fun and a good time to use. It provides extreme power to pretty much stop any enemy's advancement. A headshot means enemies have to bat and most likely use a med kit. They are going to be absolutely crippled. I don't love that you need to use shield cells to get the most out of the Sentinel, but only one shield cell these days is not too bad. The two shield cell days are long gone. You are going to have to carry more cells, which is going to mean less room for batteries or grenades or other ammo. But honestly, the Sentinel is pretty good.
good off the drop, even with iron sights. And if you are in close ranges, it's kind of like a peacekeeper if you can't have a good accurate shot. The biggest problem with the Sentinel is going to be its forgiveness. You miss a shot in the close to mid ranges and you are absolutely going to be toast. I also think when everyone has a red armor or purple helmet at end game, it becomes a lot less viable. And I'd rather have something like a 30-30 that can shoot out a series of shots and get some damage rather than relying all on that one hit to do an okay amount of damage. Our first SMG is going to be up and I want to put a big star next to it because I do think the alternator with disruptor is more like a high A tier weapon, maybe even low S tier. But unfortunately, the alternator kind of just lacks that solid time to kill to make it competitive with the majority of the other close range weapons. It is so easy to use them. So if you are new or if you are struggling with recoil control, then it's going to be very good for you because if you can't control an R9 or a car, you might as well take the thing that is going to be reliable, that is going to help you hit your shots. But just know you are going to want to try and keep enemies slightly farther away. I would say outside of about 15 meters, between 15 and 30 is really where the alternator does excel. I also like using a two times bruiser or one to two times on the alternator and treating it more like a mid to close range assault rifle, almost like a mini R301. If you do get disrupt rounds, then this thing can be very good if you combo it with something like another SMG. You got the 2X on the alternator and then you're going to back it up with like an R9 or maybe a Mastiff shotgun. Shred those shields, swap to a Mastiff or a car, and it's going to work out pretty great for you. Our first real mid-range contender in Apex is going to be the Spitfire. The Spitty has gone through a lot of ups and downs, but it's in a fair spot today. The only reason it's not higher is it's low time to kill, but this of course is going to be a trade-off with its massive mag size. I find that the Spitfire is pretty good in the early game when you can't just mow over those gray and blue shielded enemies, which does give it a little uptick this season since enemies cannot pick up armors off the ground. But later on, the Spitfire just falters, and it's also not the greatest in a close range one-on-one. -on -one. Not to mention, it has the poor handling of an LMG, so you're kind of a sitting duck if you are in the open. The biggest use case for the Spitfire, in my opinion, is going to be if you are running pubs and you want to take one on threes, maybe you're running solo, no fill, then I might want to consider using the Spitfire. The final B tier weapon is going to be the G7 Scout, and I find that the G7 Scout is probably the most straightforward weapon in the game when it comes to damage farming. I honestly had the G7 in A tier till I used it a good amount in pubs and a little bit in ranked, and I find that the G7 is just a little bit of an underperformer compared to the other marksman weapons. It's not bad, it just feels a little bit weak. And of course, it's a little bit more competitive when you are comparing it to the 3030 because that weapon did have a few nerfs. One of the biggest things going for the G7 is that it does have a decent 10 round base mag and you'll only need a level one gray mag to get it up to 15, which is pretty good. Not a lot of other guns have this type of viability from a level one attachment. It's probably gonna be the best weapon to use if you are struggling with aim due to the faster fire rate, it makes it more forgiving. And if you wanna farm some 4K games or get your Evo up in ranked, then this is a good gun to use. Quick mention that if you are struggling with randoms in Apex, as it's pretty brutal, as always, hop into my community Discord. You can find others to play with, or you can ask me any Apex question that you might have. We're now moving to the upper tier of weapons, the A tier weapons of Amazing, and there are a lot of them, which does show the health of the game and how viable so many weapons can be for you to use. Let's start with two care package guns, and this is both the Bocek and the Kraber. The Kraber is the Kraber, and since it is no longer a one shot every time, because if you have a purple helmet and a purple armor, if you have a blue helmet and a red armor, you're not gonna be able to one tap someone down anymore. So I do have it at A. It has slightly increased viability since armors are harder to level up and get to red. So you are gonna have more chances to one shot someone. The Kraber might also falter a little bit if you get it too early on in a match and you might have the swap weapons mid to end game, which could be a pretty big deal. As for the bow check, I find that this is pretty similar where if you get it too early on, it's not gonna last you all the way to end game. The bow check is a little more reliable too and overall it's good for consistent damage output i think it's the best marksman-esque type weapon in the game even over the 3030 repeater or the triple take or the g7 when you have the boat check and you're getting shot by it as well it's kind of hard to tell where those shots are coming from which can make it pretty useful and not many other weapons if any weapon has this aspect both the boat check and the creeper are good they just have minor problems that for me keep them from being real s tier weapons Unlike the G7, which I bumped down after using it a little bit more this season, the L-Star I actually had in B tier, but I ended up bumping it up one level to A as it performs pretty well, even with the removal of barrel stabilizers. Earlier during season 19, and it might even been season 18, the L-Star was insanely good, but it did have a couple nerfs. Because of these nerfs, I find that the L-Star struggles a little bit at range and keeping up with its time to kill when you are in closer to mid-range fights against SMGs or other assault rifles. It 
does have a better time to kill than the Spitfire, and its no reload feature can be very useful if you are well disciplined and you have good trigger finger. But overall, and similar to those before it, I would grab something else for energy guns like the Nemesis or the Volt, as they are going to perform way better at pretty much every range that you would use the L Star at. Now we have another marksman or poking weapon, the Triple Take. Honestly, the Triple Take for me is one of the most forgiving and easy to use weapons in the entire game. It does require a little discipline on the user's part to get the bigger hits in there as you gotta let that choke charge up. I would say it's one of the more underrated weapons right now. Even a small one third hit has always meant that an enemy has to stop and shield cell up. A big headshot means a battery, maybe a little bit more. You gotta use a battery and a syringe. One thing the triple take has over the 3030 or the G7 is that it does work pretty good in the close to mid ranges as a mini EVA 8. And I find it's a little bit more usable than these other marksman weapons where you can have a little bit more reliability if someone gets too close and you know you got this backup marksman that's not going to be half bad the rampage to me is almost a marksman rifle in my eyes but it is going to be the most formidable lmg in the game in my opinion not necessarily in time to kill but in its overall usability similar to the triple take where it's brainlessly easy to use you can farm massive damage with the rampage and you don't need a ton of slots for ammo due to its slower fire rate and its larger hitting round the rampage is great to just unload on grouped up enemies with its big mag size thermites do make it more competitive and unique but overall i don't think you need to have these but if you are playing fuse honestly stacking four to six thermites is pretty incredible you're definitely not going to want to sleep on this weapon if you are running ranked apex as i find it provides a nice middle ground between having that usefulness of a marksman but also having the viability of an assault rifle in the mid range to close ranges overall i kind of find the rampage to be that hybrid weapon that can do a little bit of everything but nothing really well over a lot of other weapons it has been a while since the R301 was a top tier must use weapon due to the damage nerf it had over a year ago. However, it is still reliable at most ranges. The biggest problem is that it does everything decently well, but it doesn't necessarily exceed in anything but one thing. It's got great range, but it's not the best. It's got a great time to kill, but it's gonna lose against other assault rifles. That one thing that it does do best is its ease of use. It is by far the most typical assault rifle in the game. If you are just coming from an another game or if you are new to apex legends this is going to be the first weapon that you should start to use and get some reps in just understand the r301 is not necessarily going to be that end game or end goal weapon that you will want to use in the long run due to nerfs across the board to smgs the havoc sees a slight uptick in its placement this season i have it at a tier but when you get a turbo it's more like a high a plus maybe even s tier weapon i still just cannot recommend the havoc enough if you treat it like an smg level three round 36 mag is huge for one of the fastest killing weapons in the game it doesn't have the greatest range so if you want to poke or apply more pressure at range something like a flatline or a marksman rifle is definitely going to be better but if you want to use a 30 30 backed up with a havoc kind of like the havoc is your smg i think that this is absolutely the way to go the only slight other problem with the havoc is going to be the fact that it is an energy ammo weapon and energy ammo generally is a little bit more scarce but since players are taking the volt a lot more this season it's not as bad as it has been in the past Yes. For the first time in probably two or more years, the R9 has not reached the S tier on my list. While it's still one of the fastest eliminating weapons in the game, it just lacks way too many things to the point where it is a little bit more of a liability than it is worth. The big one for me is gonna be its magazine size. No mag against the blue or purple armor is honestly a brutally difficult thing to do. Even a level three mag against a purple or red Evo is also difficult. The R9 also sees more recoil due to a nerf and the hip across SMGs is just not as good anymore, which makes it very difficult to recommend. If you are well disciplined and an accurate shooter, it's still incredible. It is an A, but there are just so many better options that are going to be way more reliable and way more consistent that I would be a little hesitant on taking the R99 this season. It just isn't quite as strong as it used to be. Last but definitely not least is our first in quotes real shotgun, the Peacekeeper. Peacekeeper for me is still one of the premier secondary weapons to have the best chance to pull it out and knock someone down with the largest hit you possibly can do with a single pull of the trigger. You don't need a lot of ammo with the Peacekeeper, really just one stack, which is definitely nice if you are running something that is ammo hungry, like a Nemesis, maybe an R9. The PK is going to require a certain level of skill to be proficient with it, but I also think with no digital threats on SMGs, this makes it an even better option than it has been in the previous seasons. I also kind of find the PK to be the best team fighting shotgun out of the four, as you can more 
reliably control your damage output in a 3v3 without just completely emptying the mag like an SMG or a Massive or the EVA would. Between this damage output and being able to side peek to minimize your incoming damage, there's a lot of great use cases that still make the Peacekeeper very viable in Apex Legends meta. We have arrived in S tier, which contains those that you must use and are simply just insane weapon options this season. You really can't go wrong with any of these. The first is going to be the next shotgun, the Massive, which I do give the slight edge over the Peacekeeper of the season because I find it to be just more reliable in terms of damage output. Yes, we all hate those 11s, maybe a 9 against a Caustic or a Thick Boy, but any sort of mid body shot, even from a decent range away, means a nice 50 or so hit. If you are close to enemies, you can get a huge 100 hit in there if you do get a little bit of a headshot. And for a weapon of this fire rate, it's absolutely huge. This damage output combined with being able to reload one round at a time means less downtime and you can stay in the fight for longer as you don't have to reload the entire mag. SMG is being nerfed again, kind of just means there's more room for the shotgun to shine. If you struggle with the PK, I think this is going to be the best entry shotgun in the game right now. And between this and its overall flexibility, it's definitely a must use in my opinion. A weapon I was kind of hinting at earlier during the R301 section is going to be the flatline. The flatline right now for me is the prototypical mid-range weapon that most should gravitate to. The big reason I think the flatty is an S tier is going to be a mix between its huge 30 round level 3 mag that is incredible for a harder hitting weapon like it, but also that it is very good in close ranges. The hip fire I find to be very reliable in close ranges, and if a player does miss a few SMG shots on you, this weapon can outduel a lot of SMGs in the game. The flatline also does not require much in terms of attachments, no barrel, decent dish, iron sights, and even a base round level 20 mag isn't bad since it is slower shooting and harder hitting. If you're not a fan of burst weapons, then the flatline is going to be the best assault rifle mid-range beamer that you are going to want to use. The flatline might be the typical mid-range weapon, but for me, the 3030 repeater is still the must-use mid to long-range poking weapon. It's had a handful of nerfs, but its performance I found to be mostly unchanged. The biggest thing is it's a little bit slower, not necessarily in terms of fire rate, but more so that you have to reload more often due to the magazine reductions and the reload no longer doing two at a time. Otherwise, I find this weapon to feel pretty much the same and it's probably the best weapon to use in ranked apex. Pubs, I might gravitate towards the flatline or the hemlock as the distance players are going to be to you is generally closer. This thing, honestly, is still shreds unlike its competitors. The triple take in the G7 really just cannot keep up with the 3030s damage output. You can still reload one round at a time, which means more consistent damage output, much like the Mastiff is for shotguns. I have a pair of SMGs also in S tier, and I find either of these to be incredible, and it more so depends on what you want out of them. The first is going to be the more reliable, fastest limbing weapon, the car SMG. Since the R9's nerfs, I find that the car is way more formidable. Not only is it very close in the time to kill, its larger base mag and damage per round means you won't struggle as much against those with higher level EVOs off the drop or even at end game. The car has always had the benefit of added flexibility with either mag or ammo type, which also just means that you can split up ammo from your teammates and you're going to have it get kitted out much faster than if you just had a look for a light mag. Second to this is going to be the Prowler. The Prowler, of course, does not have the same TTK since it finds finally has returned to the floor. However, I find with other SMGs struggling, the larger mag size is actually pretty huge. Being able to use it against lower EVO'd enemies due to no shields being on the ground is also a big deal. I think with every weapon that you do take in Apex, there of course has to be trade-offs. So here you are trading off faster damage output for the ability to take multiple enemies on at once. And I find this to be very nice. Also with shotguns being more viable, being able to side peek and corner peek with a burst shot from the Prowler is a lot more needed this season than it really has has been in previous seasons. Slowly falling behind another burst assault rifle, we are going to have the Nemesis Burst AR. I find that the Nemesis loses out ever so slightly when you do compare it to the Hemlock, but for the most part, the Nemesis is just incredible. You don't have as much flexibility at extreme ranges as, say, a single fire weapon, but it's close to mid-range time to kill on the Nemi is absolutely nuts. The biggest problem with this thing is going to be its ability to absolutely shred ammo. You need a little bit of discipline to not just waste shots at dumb ranges, but everything else about the Nemesis is bred for S tier. The Nemesis is just great. It's been good since it was released over a year ago. We've got a few weapons in God tier, which I deem to be the best of the best. And those that you really just can't not pick up. Our final SMG on the list is going to be the Volt. I find that the Volt has the best chance between the time to kill, easy to control recoil, which means easy to use, decent mag size, and overall a good damage per mag means you aren't going to fall short where something like an R9 might. Unlike its energy ammo counterpart, the Nemesis, it's not 
going to use up as much ammo, which is going to be helpful. The biggest thing the Volt has going for it is that since it's a lot more controllable at range, you can extend your SMG damage range to be much further than the likes of a car or an R9, which means you are more formidable at these longer range engagements, which is going to help quite a bit. Understand that a slight trade-off is the time to kill of a car, but you really can't go wrong with the Volt if you want something that is a little bit easier to control and is still going to perform very well. There's two care package guns in God tier, which should not be a surprise. Both are the Wingman and the EVA 8. Not a whole lot to say about the Wingman. Easily Apex Legends most busted weapon right now and something I expect to get a little damage nerf before the season ends. If you get a headshot and then a body shot with this weapon, an enemy is really just left crippled to the point where it's hard to counterplay a Wingman player that is head glitching or gets any sort of drop on you. As for the newcomer and first timer in the care package, the EVA 8 is actually just absurd. If you haven't used it yet, you got to try it out. There's really nothing else like it right now in the game. It can drop two fully kitted, fully evoed players in an instant if you do have a good feeling on its time and range. Even at range though, this thing is pretty nice to chunk up enemies in an oddly satisfying way. Both this EVA 8 and the Wingman for me are a must grab every time you do go buy a care package. The best all around weapon in Apex is going to be the Hemlock Assault Rifle. It's kind of a weird mix between being able to do everything that the Flatline Nemesis in 3030 can do. It has a great time to kill. It's easy to use, good range. And if you need even more range than say a mid-range assault rifle can provide, the tap firing, kind of like a 3030, is honestly pretty reliable as well. Ammo consumption for me is a big one. It's slower shooting, but it's gonna be harder hitting, which means unlike the Nemesis, it's gonna last you a little bit longer and overall be more reliable if you aren't taking fights and wiping that squad every time with no issue. I think that the Hemlock is just the best all around weapon that if you really wanna perform at everything Apex has to offer, it's a gun that you gotta get used to. Drop a comment with which weapon is your favorite right now. Be sure to hit that like button and check out this video for more on Apex's meta. Happy gaming, legends.